Happy Hip Podcast is brought to you by these cool dudes. <laughs> oh, are we on air now? <laughs> yeah, we are. Dude. Yo, what's up? It's Cooley, <laughs> and you're listening to the Red Beard Podcast, baby. Yeah, what's going on, man? Chilling here with my boy Tony. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Enthusiasm, baby. What's <laughs> up? We also have... Hello, audience. I am Jim. Yeah, that's Jim. <laughs> yeah. We... <laughs> I, do you ever notice that I wave every yeah. time I yeah. say that? Yeah, you wave every time. Yeah, it's like you can't say hi without a wave. <laughs> so um, so we got all we got three out of four here. Uh, Ren is not here today, but uh, she will be on next week. So, uh, Ren, we love you. We'll see you next week. How many, how many Ren and Stimpy jokes have you made to her? I actually have made zero. Really? Yeah, I just never... It, yeah, it's never a thing. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I haven't done a Kylo Ren joke e- yet either. Oh, dude, oh, I know, Kylo right? Kylo Ren. Mm. I'm gonna start Ooh, calling her Kyren. Yeah, we're gonna start coming up with some different. <laughs> what up, Kyren? <laughs> we're gonna start coming up with some different renditions of her name. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, she's hating this part of the episode. Nice. <laughs> she can't. She can't, She doesn't have a rebuttal. <laughs> nope. 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 <laughs> so. Oh man, so should yeah, have a, she should have like a, a solo podcast called Knights of Ren. Oh, gee. <laughs> Only instead of like K N I G H T S, it would be N I G H T S. Yeah, it would yeah, be. that would be dope. Yeah, it would. Hell yeah! Think about it, Ren. Yeah, think about it. We miss you. So yeah, we got some some uh, we got some stuff like I said every week on the docket, um, bro. The dizzy doc. Doc, dizzy, dock it, dock it. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. Um, dude, you actually posed a question to me and got very uh, enthusiastic and emotional uh, when you heard my response. So, um, dude, just, just ask the question again to the group because this was your question. You guys know about a Christmas story, right? You like a Christmas story. Yeah. I have never seen it. All right, so Jim's never seen it, which is pseudo acceptable. Mm-hmm. However, the response that I received from you was, oh, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's tough for me to sit in the same room with you right now. I said that I fucking hate it. <laughs> so, yeah, like so. I, I am. Whoa, whoa, we are on opposite sides. And usually and, and I'm going to I'm going to limit my my profanity um, going forward. But um, yeah, I just um, I don't know, man, I don't. I don't like the movie. I don't understand what it is about it that I just That's practically blasphemous. Mm. Well, I guess if you want to say that, but... I always lie to people. I'm like, oh, this is great. He finally gets his rifle. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what it was though. You know what it was. I think I. I think it's this. I think it's that when I grew up, it wasn't one of the Christmas movies that I watched as a kid, and. I just never really got into it. I, I, like when I was the first time I ever saw it was in school. They showed it around Christmas time and I just didn't get it. Like I didn't get it like, oh, you're going to poke your eye out with the, like it, that wasn't funny to me. It was never funny. I never actually found anything that happened funny. The only thing that was funny is when he actually something happens where something gets knocked out of his hand and he's like and he just goes Fuh. like he says the F word by accident and like he gets like the shit kicked out of him by his father. Like I thought that was funny. The only other thing that I thought was funny for like a second and then like the second time I saw it, it wasn't was the the lamp that looks like a leg. But I mean, like there are people that like obsess over this movie like it's the funniest thing to ever come on TV. And like it's never it's not a Christmas movie that I'll ever watch. The narrator's voice it drives me crazy. I, I can't stand that guy's voice. A lot of people love love the narrator's voice. It bothers that bothers me. I don't know why. It's just one of those movies that that doesn't do it for me. Oh, you're pissing off a lot of the audience. I right know now. that. You know, oh, what? I don't but, know. Like he, he <clears throat> like as he's talking, and I mean, I know you see it in my face. I'm, I was looking at you, and I'm just like all these like ways to kill you are flying through my head, and then I had to like shake my head and shake myself out of it. <laughs> and I was like, no, no, yeah, smile, but, but, smile, Cooley. <laughs> but for me, Yay. but but you know what? For me, it was it were other movies that that people will probably think are horrible. But I love them, and it's all like personal. T- like I, every day when I was a kid, I've talked about this before. I would mm-hmm. watch the Claymation Rudolph. Oh, like, that yeah, was that. my shit. 
right? I oh, watched man, that. That, claim, the, the, the that was probably, Rudolph is great. Right. See, but this is what I'm jam. saying. There are some people that love these things and some people that don't. I've met people that hate that. Rebecca being one of them. She doesn't I'm like Clay. Friggin- she doesn't like claymation. It freaks her out. Oh, the land right? of misfit toys. Yes. Yeah, dude. Oh. She, but that's what I'm saying. She she gets freaked out by that and doesn't like it. Where I'm where Mr. I love it. Heat miser. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that. I like uh, I like a Christmas Carol. Uh, you know, a Christmas Carol. But it's I like the I like the Donald Duck like Christmas Carol. The Mickey's Christmas Carol. I've never like, seen that. Well, then you need to watch it. I love Mickey's Christmas Carol. I love the story of a Christmas Carol in general. I didn't really like the one with, with Jim Carrey. Um, I liked um, the other Christmas movie that I like, Home Alone, one of my favorite ones. Gremlins, Die Hard. I mean, these are all like Christmas movies, but I'm just saying. like My, my favorite uh, Christmas carol was Mr. Magoo. Oh, Mr. Magoo's a good one, too. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. But see what I'm saying? Like, There are some movies that you just love. Chris, uh, a Christmas Story never did it for me. Like, I've gone back and watched it since then, and I'm literally bored. The entire movie. Like, I just can't get into it. And we've had this discussion at my cousin's house. When we go over there, like, my cousin and my my cousin's, my aunt. She's not my aunt. My cousin's aunt. She loves it. Like, they've gone to, like, the actual house and walked through the thing. They have, like a, to- like, a tour and shit. I could give zero shits about it. But they were, like, ecstatic about it. And I'm just sitting there like, you don't like it? I'm like, I'm just not a fan of the movie. And they were also blown away. You know, but it's like when somebody tells me they don't like Home Alone. I'm like, what's wrong with you? And I've met some people, you know, so I don't know. I, I don't know why. I just don't. It never did it for me. Yeah. Huh. That's my huh. my long wow. my my long. Like, response. Is, that, is that your favorite Christmas movie uh, is a Christmas story? Is that the one that stands out that Yo, ties like I, Christmas up for you? Yeah, I got to say it is the only Christmas movie for me. Uh, really? Yeah. Like, I mean, so. It's a Wonderful Life is a very close second. Oh, that's a great one. Right, so It's a Wonderful Life is a Never seen it. Because because Watch It's a it. Wonderful Life was great before a Christmas story came well, out. Well, that was the like, original, that was, yeah. right? Like, oh, that's a, a wonderful and, life and, was and, uh, 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 Jimmy Stewart. So those pedals in that. Merry Christmas movie house. <laughs> <laughs> so, those those pedals. You live with the Dada Boy I, 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 I was born in it. Um, <laughs> you just do it the fucking I, Batman. To, to me, Bane from the Dark Knight Rises sounds so much like Jimmy Stewart to me. It's <laughs> <Does awesome>. he? <laughs> That's so not accurate. That's he so does. not accurate. He does though. <laughs> like not Very like not exactly. But it sounds like house. Jimmy Stewart with like a, a like napkins over his mouth. <laughs> Not a, yeah. boy, not a boy, Clarence. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, if, like, if, like if Jimmy Stewart had a luchador mask the whole time in Wonderful Life, probably sound a little like Bane. <laughs> yeah. Wouldn't Merry be as Christmas aggressive. Movie house. <laughs> yeah, I was born in it. I, 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 I was born in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, Cooley, you mentioned uh, you this question that you posed about um, yeah, you know, it was a like, Christmas story. It was story. literally a lead into a... Uh, 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 piece of news that came out that you know fox is actually doing the uh the musical live on um you know on fox like like are you talking about like they did uh like they did like oz and peter pan and they're doing this one now yeah they're doing they're doing uh a christmas story the musical um now are they gonna do it like around christmas time i would hope so right yeah okay all right for sure like they're 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 that's their every, Christmas rehearsing and, special. Yeah. yeah, they're rehearsing and they're doing everything like now because they want to be ready, ready for, for Christmas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Maya Rudolph is going to play the mom. Okay. They're, I can they're see in that. the middle of yeah. casting and stuff. And I mean, like, uh, the dude that played Ralphie, I'm going to look up his name right now. Um, oh, is he going to make like a cameo in it? Well, no, the dude that played Ralphie is actually the writer of the musical. Oh, really? Uh, oh, okay. That's yeah. cool. Shit, um, that's awesome. I'm going to have to look this up, but is he the honest to God writer of the Broadway musical? Yes. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, shit. he created good, the Good for him making that his life. Like that's Yeah. That's a that's pretty awesome actually. That he yeah, has a part you know? in it. Peter Billingsley. You know? Yeah, that's his name. Yeah. I know why I couldn't remember it, but yes, that's Peter it. Billingsley is uh is, is the creator of the musical uh and it's basically like it's super faithful to the to the movie but they throw in like these obviously they throw in musical numbers of course um, yeah. 
and flesh out some of the stuff from the the movie. Well, it's supposed to be like a kind of a divide. It's part yeah. musical, part of the movie. Right. It's like a little bit of both worlds. Exactly. Right. And, right. And, and and so far, it's been it's been uh, received very well by the public. Uh, Tony, you probably won't like it because you have no soul. Um, <laughs> well, people would, <laughs> people would assume that anyway because I'm a ginger. So. <laughs> So I guess oh, that's, that's not surprising. That's what I was talking about. You thought I was talking about because you didn't like a Christmas story? Yeah, that's exactly oh, yeah. what it is. <laughs> you don't have a soul because you don't like a Christmas cow. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. That's already a thing. <laughs> so, oh, man. No, I, I honestly, I, w- I would be down to watch that because Christmas is my favorite holiday. Um, you know, I really do enjoy it. Uh, it's my favorite time of the year. Um, you know, the sun isn't as brutal, uh, for one, but I, I just love the feel of everything. And I like, I went to school for theater, so I like to see how that's going to actually play out on stage rather than on film. So I'll definitely watch it, you know, and then I'll have my review, uh, to follow. Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I I'm not expecting that it's going to be great, but I, I'm expecting that it's going to, that my review will be great uh, it probably just will because be. I, I absolutely love the property. Um, it's just, I mean, it's it's a fucking masterful work of storytelling, and I don't understand how you don't get it. And I get it. I just don't care for it. <laughs> like, I get it, but that's it. I mean, that's I not w- what you said three minutes ago. <laughs> no, no. I get the story. Like, I okay. get what it's about. I just All don't right. like it. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't know. <laughs> um, hey, man, I'm not going to lie, but I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm, like, souped for fucking, you know, the Fox Live production. There hasn't been one that I liked yet. I thought that... The sound of music was weak. I thought that Peter Pan, as much as I wanted to like it, sucked. Christopher Walken wasn't that good. I thought um, The Wizard of Oz was fucking great. I wasn't a big fan. I only watched a part was of it. The, was um, it The Wizard of Oz or was it The Wiz? It was no, The Wiz. It, it, was, it was The Wiz. It was, was it the, the Wiz? It was The Wiz. Yeah. It was uh, the African-American The Wiz. That's what I that was. I told you you can say black. Um, I'm just respecting which is, the community. Which is, well, the which community is better than The Wiz. I didn't want to say, oh, it was The not Black just, Wiz. Because not <laughs> anybody, you know, the, <laughs> like, you know, don't say that. You just say The Wiz because that's what it's called. Yeah, the problem. Well, no, I know that, but I'm just saying that that's the difference between The Wizard of Oz. Oz and the Wiz. That was one of the big differences. I like the Wiz all, better than the Wizard of Oz. Yeah, it was all. Black I think it's people. a lot Michael more Michael Jackson was in it. Like yeah. that was the big thing. I'm not so saying the, it to be the, racist. No, but the problem <laughs> the problem with African American Tony and and I'm I'm just pointing it out is that not everybody who's like black is African American. All right, word. Like, then cool. I I'm just trying to be PC, man. Yeah. If you yeah, but I mean it's it's not it's not. But I mean it's. It was, Typical at white time, person, always afraid to offend. No, at one I time, don't. It, no, no. At one time, <laughs> at one time, it was, it was, I guess, politically correct to say African American, and I guess everybody was just kind of like, yeah, great. But it, oh, that always offended the people that weren't actually African because they're like, oh, it's an African American. All right, so the Wiz had black people in it. So I'm not African, <laughs> and that's, bro. And that's and that's that's <laughs> that. So. All right, I'll I'll I won't say it anymore. I'll go back to regular. Just say, yeah, just regular black. <laughs> just regular black, not jet black, <laughs> not matte black. Yeah, just black, <laughs> just black. <laughs> so, so not Matt LeBlanc, who's white. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so moving on, uh, Cooley, you started watching finally Ozark, which I recommended. Your two episodes in, man. What do you think so far? I love it, man. It's it's really good. Yes. I, I um, knew it. I don't think that it's like breaking bad caliber. I agree with you at all. Completely. I, because see what people don't, everybody who says, Oh, it's breaking bad. Like they're just like, Oh, it deals with drugs and money for the record. I've never said that. No, no, no I know. I know. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, protecting myself. <laughs> I did. Oh, it deals with drugs, money, and it's a family guy. Right? Like, so it's gotta be like breaking well, it's bad. The same thing. Yeah. I mean, the thing about Breaking Bad that is, uh, like, just that sets it apart from everything is that the story arc, the characterization of Walter White. Yeah, you have Walter White, and he starts off one way, and by the end, he's a completely different person. Where in Ozark, Jason Bateman's character, I have this feeling that your character starts off as the character that he's going to be at the end of the series. Like we're seeing, we might see a little bit of an arc, but he's already in the thick of this shit. But we can't actually, okay, you're not, you're not as far as I am. The only thing I will say is that I just watched the eighth episode Mm -hmm. 
and they do a major flashback to like before he is where it started. So you see exactly who he was. Oh yeah. And what led up to him being where he is in the first episode. Right. So you get a sense of where he started. And I have a feeling that as this series progresses, I would love to see him get fucking dark. But like, I want to see him get like ruthless because that's something I would never expect out of him. But having but, a flash, having a flashback to where he was and actually being where he was and taking that journey with him all the way is is different. It is very yeah. different. But so, they still gave you a sense of where he was, is what I'm hinting right. at. So yeah. But uh, but so far, I mean, like Breaking Bad aside, because uh, you, you, you can't take, compare it yeah, to Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad. Yeah, is, yeah, you can't. Like I mean, you peak, that's yeah. like the peak don't of don't Everest. compare it to Breaking Bad. Like no. it's not. But I was just, try, I was trying to when I started watching it because that's what everybody was saying. Everyone, that, I don't know why people are compare. saying that. Yeah. It's just not. But it, but but it's still very good. But putting it aside, yeah, it's it's excellent. It's uh, it's well written. Um, I really like his uh his characters like way of dealing with shit, like just like how he talks his way out of everything. Yeah, man. Um, like he doesn't, he's not violent at all. He's not violent. He doesn't like do anything. He doesn't put his hands on anybody, just anybody so far. He just, he just talks his way out of everything. And he, he's very manipulative. Yeah. Like everything, everything that he says has a purpose, even if it doesn't seem like it does. And it's, it's, that's, that's what has me intrigued is like when he, when he talks, like, I'm like, all right, where's this leading to? Um, what's he gonna do with this now? And and like when he's when he's sitting in the bar with that guy and he's oh like, yeah 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 and he's yeah. like taunting him yeah and then like he he basically talks the guy into fucking punching him in the mouth. Uh, I don't know how far that went because I think that was like the last time we see him mm -hmm. in that episode, and I haven't gotten to the next one yet. So, but I mean like. It was obvious to me that he was doing that because he was in front of that the girl that the girl owns the bar, yeah, that owns the bar to impress her, so that she'll have pity on him and actually let him like wash his money through there. I think she he was trying to show her that he's interested in her business, but also selfless, right? You know what I mean? Like it's not just about that. Like deep down, he's actually a good guy. Yeah, you know. Um, but it was yeah, it was the the episode the, the series so far. Dude, I, it's I, great. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This is major spoiler territory, so fucking take your headphones off I'm for ready. a second. Mm -hmm. uh, when, when your your boy hits the ground, mm -hmm. you know who I'm talking about? What, you, Jason Bateman? Or no, you, when he hits about? the ground. Okay. Give me got, a little bit he more. Got, he got thrown out of the window or the building or whatever over the balcony. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Gary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and then Jason Bateman sees it, and then he just turns around and walks back <laughs> to <leaves>. his car. <laughs> well, he was gonna be like, he's like, oh, that's that fucking. He's like, all this time he goes just betrayal, and then all of a sudden he hits the ground. He's like, all right, problem solved. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, yeah. like anything I was gonna do, that topped it. Yeah. yeah. Anything like any and then he gets a, and then he gets a call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like if I was going to get pissed at this guy. That's more than I was gonna do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, that's, but that's Laura what you really want good, to happen. Man. Yeah, like it's more yeah. like that. It's like that's beyond what you're capable of doing. But you hope someone else is around that's capable of doing that. Yeah, but I think he also he left because he's like, someone's up there that I don't want to yeah. talk to right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, no. <laughs> No. Yeah. Have you, you watched the first episode? I have not. No. Right. To I to be honest with you, I haven't been. <laughs> I haven't been as excited to watch this as other people. Oh, do do it. it I, I, think, I watched I think the tra uh, I watched the trailer the other day, and I was just so like, just, it does just, not look like what something I want to just watch. do it because like I wasn't I was the same way. And I also Ask Tony. and I also absolutely hate Laura Lenny. Dude, like I she's hate her. Fucking good. In I this really shit, man. hope in real life she I'm contracts a, the big C. <laughs> I am not a. Yeah, oh, not, oh, that's <laughs> fucked up. I'm not a. I'm not a fan of Laura Linney either, man. But, I'm just but I can, joking, but Laura. I can, but I can tell you that. Um, I want. I want I, you to get AIDS. Like I started. I, I'm not a fan of hers, and I started off. I'm not a fan of hers, and I started off hating her character, like based on like you know what we find out. Yeah, and. As this, as I got into the second episode and through the second episode, and you kind of learn some of her motivations and and why she was doing what she was doing, um, and then like just the way that she's handling this shit with uh, with her husband, I, I'm starting to like her character a lot. I'm telling you, man. Like when you get to the eighth episode, it 
like Becca and I watched it last night and we were just like out loud being like, this explains so much about why they are the way they are. Mm. Like the, like the eighth episode, I was like, I can't believe they waited this long to give us somewhat of a backstory. How many episodes is 10? Okay. And they're about an hour a piece, but dude, I would say this, like, I know after this, you have like today off, just go watch like the entire first episode and see if it grabs you. You know what I mean? All it's right. an hour, dude. It's an All hour. All right. In, betu- yeah. in between my marathon running. Yeah, exactly. Oh. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, um, dude, you'll, you'll like it, man. Like, I... I, 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 um, I bet you I, I bet you I will. Yeah. You know? I was in the same... I could have watched it last night. You know what I decided to watch? What? <laughs> <laughs> the first two episodes of Release the Hounds. <laughs> <laughs> it is a is it is a British horror game show <laughs> that I found on Netflix, and it's not that good. <laughs> but, but I watched the first one, and I went, eh, I'll watch the second. <laughs> Oh shit! Release the hounds, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's called release the hounds. No, seriously though, I was in the same place you were, man. Like I, I didn't, <laughs> I didn't think I wanted to watch it. I was like, I'll get to it eventually, whenever I do. And like, I, I was sitting there, Court and I were like, oh, what do you want to do now? I was like, I don't know. You want to check out Ozark? And she was like, What's that? And I told her like, you know, it's this show with Jason Bateman, and everybody's been telling me about it. And she was like, Sure. So we put it on, and then it was just fucking lights out from there. Nice. It was, it, like it, it starts off. It starts off weird, and I'm just like, what the fuck is he doing? And then, like, you find out in the second episode, basically, what he was doing in the first episode. Yeah, that was a little weird. I was like, yeah. all right. Um, anyway, let's uh, – dude, Jim, I'm sorry, man. Yes, but no. you are so effed right now because we are uh, going to talk about Game of Thrones, and <laughs> okay. you haven't fucking watched it. I haven't watched the last two episodes. Well, I don't even know how that I, happens. I, I don't yeah, know. why, bro? You have I, so much time right now. <laughs> I'm just not watching I, it. Dude, I, I work. I work a nine to five, <laughs> which isn't always nine to five. Sometimes it's like one to ten. <laughs> I've been on Game of Thrones day. It's like at, at least ten. Why 10 are to you 7. watching Release the Hounds and not yeah. Game of Thrones? <laughs> it's two most, episodes of Release the Hounds. Yeah, which probably. It's mostly. Been two it's mostly of that. two things. During the day, I have been working out, and I know the audience doesn't have a good idea of what I look like. But like I am not the workout type, mm-hmm. so it's it takes me the whole day to recover. <laughs> I, you can I recover laying down this, watching this is Game no, of Thrones. This is no joke. the The day before <laughs> I started working out, I ate eight hot pockets. <laughs> the day right before I started working out. <laughs> Uh, that's not all that I ate. Was that, that like a swan song? Like, like I'm gonna yeah. do this oh, that was, and get it out of my system. I, had, I looked in my, I looked in my freezer, <laughs> and I was like, oh, this is. These are the things that I should not have in the house. But instead of throw them away, because I was like, oh damn, and I already paid two fifty for these. <laughs> I had to eat them all in one sitting. <laughs> and I ate other stuff too. Like, don't you know. Nothing good. It wasn't like, like, like oh, I ate, I just, ate hot ate pockets like, and then some Brussels sprouts. You had like, a, you <laughs> had like a cake. Oh yeah, I had a. I also had that day. I had a donut cheeseburger. <laughs> what the? Where what, do you get what that? What the fuck is a donut cheeseburger? <laughs> it's it's a it's like a meat patty with cheese on it in between a donut. They, they Does call, it have a disclaimer behind it that says you will definitely shit your pants after you finish it? You know what? I didn't I shit my pants because I wasn't wearing any. I already knew. <laughs> Do they call that the Luther? <laughs> they, they don't know. I don't know. Have you it's, ever watched the Boondocks? It was. I bought it at Walmart. It was a legit like Walmart product. <laughs> Wait, I gotta finish. I gotta finish. It was like a Sam's day. choice. Wait, so you did that. You ate that that Donut cheeseburger, and then what happened? And then eight hot pockets, and then the following day, I took three shits in a row. <laughs> okay, and then I ran five miles. Jesus Christ! But and then I threw up. <laughs> <laughs> and and now and that was that was the, in the and then at night I watched the Red Sox games. Okay. I I enjoy watching sports. Yeah, and then okay. and now you're just like on your. You've been drinking nothing but water, nothing all healthy water. stuff. Yep, all chicken. Yeah, fish soups. Yep, fish. Yep, definitely that good stuff. And but it was just, it was. I had to make a choice 
You know, was it yeah. going to be, am I going to work out? Or am I going to watch Ozark? Yeah. And I... You, I mean, it, the thing is, the out. thing is, is like, you know what to do. Like you, you're, I, I've seen you in like, in really good shape. And now you're just like, I need to, I need to work I'm gonna out. I'm going to do more. it again. I've, I've got to get back into it because my entire wardrobe does not fit me. No. And I'm like Oprah. It'll be like every two years I'll be like thin <laughs> and then I'm fat and then I'm thin again. And it's, oh man, I'm going to die at an early age just from my inability to just keep a weight and stick to it. Yeah, if you just stayed fat, you oh, just live it's, longer. Oh, it's ridiculous! <laughs> like there'll be like it'll just—it's like a switch turns on. So basically, you're like a mediocre Christian Bale with no movie roles. Oh yeah, inside. no, I'm not getting paid millions of dollars to to lose this weight or gain it. Oh, yeah, like it's just this is my movie role in real life. Is like sometimes I'm thin and attractive, and sometimes I'm just fucking fat and freaking. <laughs> <laughs> And it's oh, just, it shit. all depends on the year. Oh, dude, I fucking love it, dude. Uh, well, anyway. Game Oz of Thrones. Dude, Game yeah, of Thrones. So I'm sorry. Why yeah, did, no, that was. It, that what was, happened? Dude, w dude, this fucking podcast should just be called The Wormhole. Because yeah. that's all we do is go on tangents. But it's great, man. That's some of our best shit. But honestly, dude. Uh, you're after right now because we're going to talk about it. So uh, Game of Thrones this past episode, Cooley. Uh, dude, it started off slow and then it just took a friggin' 180 turn. Yeah, my for dog the was on better. the floor, man. Your dog? What? Would you say your dog was on the floor? Yeah, my dog was on the floor because that makes perfect sense. Your jaw well, was on the floor. Well, that's usually where dogs yes. are. I know what you, <laughs> you said. I was trying to find something else that was on the floor. <laughs> You, dude, you could have said my dong was on the floor. Yeah. No. It was. It was, no. yeah, because you were sitting on the floor. So basically, well, no, oh, was, he was I on was the sitting, couch. I was sitting on the bed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> 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 yep. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> so we um I was I was very surprised. Dude, I don't know if if it was for me, I did not see it going the way that it did. I didn't expect, you know, at one point in the episode further to go, oh, where's Where's the queen? Oh, she's not here. Where is she? And all of a sudden, like, they, they cut to, like, them dragging the gold back to base. And you just hear somebody go, wait, what is that? Yes. And then all the fucking, what do they call it? The, the target, Dothraki. The Dothraki come over. She's on her fucking dragon. I was like, oh, shit. And, dude, and then when she was like, Dracarys, and it's the fucking thing just lit up everybody. I was like, fuck. Yo, um, when, when they hit Drogon with the... Uh, that scorpion spear. Oh yeah. I thought it, I, I don't know, man. I just thought it was like over like, but you, you know, it's not because she's not going to die. No, she's not. Um, I thought the dragon was going to die, mm. but cause I thought, I actually thought that he hit, he hit it in the mouth. Oh no. I thought he hit it like in the, in the, in the breast, <clears throat> but it's actually like the shoulder, which is why it like started getting all fucked up and had to come yeah. down. But you know, it's all right because in the next episode, it's right behind her. Just like when she's, talking to everybody like i don't want to kill you guys i want you to b bond with us you know like you know, work with us so mm -hmm. uh a lot of people think that jamie lannister's dead and i he's not he took a he, he i mean like i don't think he is no but i mean it's good it, it he's like one of the best characters in that whole show yeah There's but i mean if he does die it's not like it doesn't make sense i mean he's got all that armor on i mean it's really going to be tough for him to like swim up yeah, but also I just and get air. You know what I mean? That's that's one of the things that people are Someone's saying. Someone's gonna save him. But that that's what I'm saying. Somebody's gonna save him. I would not be surprised if she has. I don't know if this is the thing. If it's something that could even happen. But there was part of my mind that says maybe Daenerys will have the fucking dragon pull him right out of the water. I don't know. I don't think she has that much control over the dragons, though. I don't know, man. I mean, she, if, in order to say a word and have them light up everybody, I mean, that's some control. They haven't turned on her. Well, no, but I, I think that, so the dragons, like, listen to her and shit, but I mean, like, she, ha she has a way of speaking to them, but I don't think she can be like, hey, Drogon, get him out of the water, and Drogon will go, like, okay. And, well, like, I don't know. I mean, I, that, that's, that's, like, I mean, he wouldn't say okay. He would be like, Rawr! like, I think, yeah, they're, exactly. I think they're, like, I think they're, like, I think they're, like, intelligent but i think they're intelligent like dogs mm -hmm. are intelligent 
Okay, so and unless, dogs have pulled people out of water before. Yeah, so. dogs they're have trained been able for to that. Pull you know what I mean? But I don't think I don't think her water. dragons are like trained for that. All right, we're not going to get into a wormhole on this, but like dragons are very intelligent. I think from what we've seen. <laughs> so who 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 what knows? What have you that? seen? All Dude, dragons he, that I've they known. They fucking light up shit in a fucking straight line. <laughs> like I don't know. It's not just like. Uh, dude, the, I think that how it comes up right behind her and lands directly but, I mean, behind her without crushing her. That's just a matter of keeping her. their head steady. Yeah, that's just that's still like I mean, my dog, I don't know, bro. I don't if know. I say I sick him, my dog will bite you in the nuts. If I if I I don't think he would. He, if I say if 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 you there's there's a certain key word that we would use that would like trigger him to like go after somebody. Finn would not do that to me though, because he knows me. <laughs> he would come up to me and be like, "Oh, hey, he's cool though." Like, dude, like. Finn will Finn Finn goes nuts on me. <laughs> all right, whatever. Like he so, won't, he won't bite me, but he like he gets all like wild and shit like in in weird like yeah. when you when you trigger him. Yeah. Like but anyway. Anyway, I don't know. I think the dragon I I from I just think they look they are very intelligent animals. We don't know cuz they fucking don't exist. So, I mean, from what I from things I've seen in the show, I just feel like it's a possibility that that might be a thing. Probably not. I just don't think that he's dead. I think that he's too big of a character for him to die this way. If he was going to die, he should have went out with what like uh, with what glory. looked like was going to kill him, but did not. That would have been the cool way for him to go out, not drowning. I feel like that's kind of weak. Um, and I feel like What's-His-Face jumped to save him from that. Why would they do that only for him to die that way? It just doesn't make sense for me. It's possible, but doesn't make too much sense. I just think that they have, uh, in the past uh, six seasons had people go out in ways that were completely unexpected and uncool. Yeah. True. So, so and it's more realistic. That, I mean, you know, without being the case, I mean like this, be a yeah. harsh way to die. That yeah. Way. Like, Oh, he's going to die valiantly on in battle. And then he just fucking drowns. And it's yeah. And that's what I'm like, saying. Like, that's, that's what, just that's a what terrible the, way to end the legacy. Yeah. And it's like, that's, it's always, it's always some kind of like, they always kill somebody in a way that's just like, fuck, that's not how you expected them to go out. Right, like, like fucking Rob Stark, King of the North. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? The Red Wedding was like that was horrible. Like, and it wasn't like an awesome way to die. Like, he didn't go no, out. Very cool. No, like it, it was just it was terrible. <laughs> I just don't see Jamie Lannister and the going reason out like that. I just don't. I don't see it. I don't. And I don't. And I feel like just the way that they ended the episode, dude. It's like fucking talking <clears throat> about Glenn from The Walking Dead. He's not gonna go out under a fucking dumpster. Like he just he's not gonna go out like that. He's he's gonna go out a different way. Yeah, but they had so many reasons. So like this is a a little bit of a wormhole, but they had so there were so many reasons why you could look at that scene, the the dumpster scene, and you could pull you could pick like so many different ways that he could get out of that situation. Mm -hmm. This there's not there's only one way he gets out, and that's somebody helps him out. Mm, I don't because know. because he's not. I mean, he's underwater, man. He's underwater drowning. With his armor on, and that shit is not easy to take on and off. I'm I haven't watched the episode, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I am leaning towards Tony only in this regard. I'm assuming that the queen has been captured. No, no, no. no. The queen what? Uh, Daenerys? Daenerys. Yeah. No, no she came in with her dragon and like no, fucked no, no, everybody no, no. up. No, fucking um, what? What's Cersei? what's her name? Yes. No, no, she hasn't been captured. Yeah, oh. she wasn't. She wasn't with them. No, well, she I would, was. I would assume. If you're going to try and uh, enforce Cersei's hand, that you would not kill her brother and like the apparent love of her life. Well, that's who the that's who Daenerys is going after. I I, I know. I'm aware. So if I mean, so she'd be like, well, fuck this guy and fuck everybody at King's Landing. I don't give a shit because I'm gonna try to kill them anyway. I don't know. I mean, I, I, yeah. So okay. here's I'm, here's I my shouldn't put in my two cents. This is but I don't my know what the fuck's going. This on. is my theory. Um, I don't think Jamie Lannister dies because I ultimately think that he is going to uh, end up uh, working with um, Daenerys and and and, and then also possible. team up again with his brother Tyrion who they are brothers, he's going to understand why Tyrion's doing what he's doing. And I also think that at some point, uh, Jamie Lannister is going to end up killing his sister. It's possible, yeah. Because he's realizing Cersei that sucks. she's fucking nuts. Like, I, she's, got, she's had so much shit happen to her that she's not thinking clearly anymore. She's not fit to rule. But does she, was she ever really thinking clearly? 
Like well, I think she always she was, was always just a she power was always going down a bitch. dark road. But now it's just there's there's no light at the end of the tunnel for her. Like everybody that she like her fucking daughter's been killed. Her son died. Like both sons died. Like they she's she's fucking lost it because of that. She lost three people in under what a year. Like her children. Like you know what I mean. Like that that I think uh, she was like fuck it. I don't care anymore. And she's ruthless now. So there, I don't think there's any light for her. There's no way for her to turn this around and be like a great queen. So I feel like Jamie Lannister is going to realize like she needs to be stopped, or it's just going to be it's going to be centuries of shit. You know the um, the the difference for me is like you you are very sure that he's not going to die. I can't be just because there are people that have died before their stories have were finished being told. Mm. And and people that it made no sense for them to die when they did, like Have were died. they've died. So like this is a this these are showrunners and these are writers that I'm not gonna say they don't give a shit about the characters, but they are very keen on destroying the lives of characters that you love and that you think should go further and do things that are gonna be great things. Like everybody that you expect to achieve greatness in this show, aside from Daenerys and Jon Snow have been killed. Even Jon Snow was killed. Yeah. But brought back. Brought back. So it's like it's one of it's to me it's just one of those things that like I want to believe that he's going to survive, but like I am I am not going to invest in that. Uh we'll know we'll know more in the next episode, but I mean I just feel like it's uh, it's it's one of those things that can literally go either way. I mean, who's to say who's to say that Jamie Lannister isn't dead? Winter arrives and he comes back as a White Walker. This is this is also a possibility. Yeah, if they pull him out of the water, um, you know what I mean. Like I, I don't know, maybe, but I mean, let's maybe they don't pull him out of the water. Yeah, but maybe, maybe they don't. Winter rushes in and he walks himself out of the water. Maybe. I mean, we'll see. We'll have to see what happens when, if it comes to that. I mean, I I don't know. I don't know. We, we won't yes, know until next of, But as of now, but also Cooley, a very good theory. I, I, very I'm good theory. Gonna side with Tony. Mm-hmm. I think that they're probably not going to kill Jamie in that way, not just yet. Yeah. I think he's too big. I think he's <clears throat> I think he's a uh, he's someone that you want to see at that final battle. Like basically what happened, I mean, we've already talked about it, but basically what happened was he like the dragon g- comes down, lands cuz it got like wounded by this arrow which which Daenerys is trying to pull out. And then Tyrion is watching his brother um, and and sees that he sees that Daenerys has her back turned trying to pull this thing out. So he picks up a sword and he's on his horse. He's like, ha, ah, and he like starts running and Tyrion's going like literally, he's like, you idiot. He's like, you idiot, don't do it. Like he's seeing this happen. Yeah. And as he gets closer and he's just about to do it, the fucking dragon head turns, opens its mouth, shoots fire. And all of a sudden the fucking other guy, I forget his name, that always has that sword in his back. Like the, he's like, he got the long hair. I don't remember his name. Oh, was um, the cell sword. It was Steve. <laughs> yes. Yeah, whatever. But you'll know who, whatever. Regardless, he literally jumps, pushes him out of the way of the dragon's mouth, and they land into like a fucking pond or whatever. And he, Bron. he uh, yeah, he gets missed by the, by the flame from the dragon. So he, was Bronn able to take, pull him out of the water? That's, that's the only, that's the only, we don't know recourse. if he, yeah. because like he, he's the one that, that, you know, dives, tackles him. He might off have actually horse. gotten some of the fire. And like oh. and like they're in the water together, so maybe he's not unconscious. Looks like Jamie's unconscious. Yeah. yeah. So if he's unconscious and he's being pulled down by his armor, that's why I'm saying unless somebody yeah, drags him out of the water, it's gonna be tough for him to survive. And that's hard to do just in regards for one person yeah. to so, pull a man covered in armor. Yeah, in armor. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Plus he's got that friggin' metal hand. But anyway, we'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, I, I'm excited to actually see where this is going to go because it's just it was a fucking awesome episode. Everybody that I know has been talking about it. I feel like this season started off a little slow, although very good. And now it's just officially picked up into overdrive. So I'm, ex- I'm, I'm so fucking pumped for Game what of Thrones. What happens next? Um, well, uh, looks like I'm probably going to have to watch at least Game of Thrones t- today. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Just catch back up. Now let's just take a second to hear a little bit about our sponsor. Supply and demand investing. Guys, not all investments are created equal. So 
Cooley, if you had to choose, who would you invest in, Disney or Facebook? Uh, that's a good question. I mean, uh, I'd probably go with Disney. I mean, they, they own Marvel. They own Lucasfilm, which I, you know is the, you know, they got Star Wars now. You know what I mean? Star Wars is huge. These guys are making millions, if not billions of dollars per movie. So, I mean, hundreds of billions sometimes. I, I, I'd have to invest in Disney. Yeah, man. I, I don't know. I mean, like, I think if I was going to invest in anything, it probably would be Facebook because we use Facebook to post all of our stuff. Also, they own Instagram. They own WhatsApp. And they also own Oculus. So, they're doing pretty well. But uh, check this out, man. Did you know that Disney pays an annual dividend of 1.48% and Facebook doesn't pay a dividend? Yeah, I mean, like, I, I actually do own Disney stock so, stock, so I'm, like, kind of putting my money where my mouth is. Well, over the last three years, which of these stocks has performed better? Well, the winner's going to be Facebook, man, because they grew at 130.26% versus Disney, which is 21.99%. $10,000 invested with Facebook grew $23,026 dollars versus Disney's $12,000. So, dude, if you want to see some of these charted results, I would go to supplyanddemandinvesting.com slash redbeard, and you know that's us, man. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Supply and Demand Investing <laughs> is here to help you when it comes to comparing stocks, mutual funds, and or bonds in the hopes of delivering better than average results, whether they be long-term, short-term, or something in the middle. So if you'd like a free stock comparison or a free financial review, then please go to supplyanddemandinvesting.com slash redbeard. And remember, like any good sports team, when it comes to investing, there are times to play offense by investing in things like the S&P 500 and times to play defense by investing in things like bonds, CDs, or cash. The Giants! Yeah, so I say go Pats. Fuck the Pats. The Pats won. Also, one thing that came out uh, or has been talked about recently is Defenders. Defenders is is getting really good reviews. They released the first episode at uh, San Diego Comic Con unexpectedly, and uh, it got, like I said, really good reviews. Um, one of the things I've heard is that Sigourney Weaver does an excellent job, which I'm like really happy about. Not very surprised uh, about. I, exactly. I, I was just anytime she does anything, I'm always like, oh, I hope it's still good because <laughs> I really love her. Um, but, um, yeah, I just heard that it the, from the first episode, uh, the Defenders literally, like, hits the ground running and is kick-ass. It's eight episodes of, like, nonstop action. Well, I think so, that's what everybody wants from the Defenders. Yeah. We've already told the backstory of all these people. Now let's see them do some fucking action. Yeah, and, and right up there with Sigourney Weaver, they've been saying that uh, Kristen Ritter is also uh, – like turning in a stellar performance. Yeah. Um, which I thought she, I thought out of all of them, uh, in my opinion, the uh, Jessica Jones series was probably like number one, followed by, uh, for me, Luke Cage. Sure. Then, then Daredevil, then uh, Iron Fist. Yeah. I mean, I, I definitely think Kristen Ritter brings like that, that sarcasm and like that really kind of like dark humor to the series, which I think. Sometimes, like in the past, like in Iron Fist, it was it was lacking. Like, I laugh, I laughed a lot in in um, Jessica Jones because of her sarcasm. Yeah. yeah, you know, and she's bringing that back. Like she, at one point in the trailer, um, Daredevil um, is wearing like that cloth over his face. Yep, and uh, and uh, Iron Fist is like, oh, he's like, is that is that pork or whatever or something or it's the rice that's on the table in the Chinese restaurant, and then. Or is that is that I forgot what he says, but then Daredevil can smell it, and he goes, "Oh, it's pork." And then Kristen um, Jessica Jones walks by, and she goes, "You're really weird." <laughs> just like, <laughs> like you know what I mean, like like just you know, yeah. just like that sarcasm, you know, they kind of breaks those like those weird moments. Yeah, is perfect. So, um, and I'm, I mean, I don't know exactly when this takes place, but. Is it supposed to be earlier? Because he's got the cloth over his head and not like the actual helmet. That well, Derek no, he's got the cloth over his head. Um, I, think like ma I think mainly because he's not in uniform, but he also doesn't want people to know his identity. Yeah. I so think it was like he just had that on him in case. Yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. I that's think he I'm was thinking. probably going about being a fucking lawyer. Oh, and then yeah. something happened and he was like, oh, shit, I don't have ch time to change. I'll just put on this freaking bandana. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of being like Deadpool and like jumping into a phone booth for like 
two minutes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> that was that was while good. the crime goes down. Yeah. That's awesome. And then it's finished by the time he gets out. <laughs> yeah. He's like, sorry, man. I like he literally like Deadpool off. literally makes a phone call while he's in the booth changing. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, um, dude. Speaking of, speaking of Deadpool, did you see the the pictures of uh, Cable? Yes, I did. Looks fucking did you, awesome. Did you see that? I have not. I'm going to oh, show dude. you right now. I'm I have looking, it. Oh, awesome! Dude, Excellent. Um, Josh Brolin looks friggin' he, he badass. Looks, he looks Cable. Yeah, dude, he looks awesome. Oh shit! Show him the other picture. Yeah, dude, looks awesome. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, he looks yeah. badass. Oh, I love the teddy bear. Yep. Dude, oh yeah, it's, he is. He's a Cable looking mofo. Yeah. yeah. So the teddy bear, um, I think has a little bit of significance. I have a feeling that they may be introducing. I would assume they don't. They don't just throw teddy bears on yeah. people like that. I got a feeling he may be coming back in time with the uh, intentions of saving or finding Hope. Mm. Uh, I don't know if do, do you know of this character Hope? No, I would assume what it's his daughter or something. Well, kind of. Uh, there's a there's, kind of yeah. There's a uh, there's a character named Hope uh, Summers or Hope Gray. I can't remember which one which name they chose, but she's uh, she's a baby uh, like future version of uh, or combination like child of like some uh, Scott Summers and and uh, Jean Gray. Yeah, with all of Jean Gray's powers and stuff. Um, I think. Hold on. I have to look that up, because Hope I never really got Hope's, into. Hope Summers. Yeah, who is she? Who is she? The child of? Uh, I'm I'm looking. Like it I know up. her power set. I just don't know whose kid she is. Uh, it's I I will say though I've already gotten to the to the part where Cable does save Hope in the comic books. Mm-hmm. Uh, alter ego, team affiliates, partnerships, aliases, abilities. No family, um, huh? Yeah, nothing yet that I can see. But keep talking, and I will so, keep looking. I mean, obviously her last name's Summers. So yeah, you would think Cyclops would have something to do with it, right? But it could be Nate too, because Nathan Summers, right, uh, is is Cable. But he's uh, but he's carrying that teddy bear around, which means that he's probably. I think he's searching for some child, uh, or maybe has the child with him, uh. That he's raising, which is which is interesting to me. I will say, regardless, when you sent me those pictures, um, I was pretty blown away because they did a really good job of making him look like the actual character from the comic books. Mm -hmm. Like he looks awesome, and not to mention, like Josh Brolin's having a fucking great year. Yo, like, Josh Brolin. I, I mean, there was a there's Jesus a picture. Jesus Christ, Thanos. Th I mean, dude, there was a picture that uh, Ryan Reynolds tweeted out of mm -hmm. him and Josh Brolin just like hanging out. Yeah. No, no, no. It wasn't him and Josh Brolin. It was Josh Brolin with a stuffed uh, Deadpool. Yeah, I saw that. You see that? Like, mm -hmm. with, And he's like flexing? Yeah. Yo, your boy is fucking ridiculously diesel. Yeah, he's, yeah, definitely. I don't, yeah, like I don't remember him being that, like he, he, he definitely. Well, he obviously had to work out for the role. He's I doing mean, that. Yeah. He did that for the role, right? Yeah, like he wasn't course. He wasn't that diesel before, right? Like no. Men in Black, Josh Brolin wasn't like cut like that no right? he was i mean he was he's always been in decent shape but i mean like he put on some muscle well, yeah. that's super defined yeah because like he's like he's like bodybuilder defined right now yeah well i mean he, i mean the character's obviously got a military background yeah. so i mean he has to look like that so i'm right. sure that he went through some sort of regimen to get in shape but for this role this role the, the 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 coolest shit about that is that it gave me hope mm. hope in what you didn't think he was gonna be able to pull it off no hope for me <laughs> Oh, oh, I see Josh what you're saying. Josh Brolin okay. is 49 years old, man. Yeah. Yeah, that dude. That dude is 49, and he looks like he's fucking 20. Yo, not to bring up a really shitty movie, but, like, did you see fucking Nicolas Cage in Ghost Rider, how ripped he got? Yeah. I mean, like, he's standing in front I, of the mirror, and he's all, like, I abbed Ghost out. Rider. I was like, holy shit. I own Ghost Rider, and I own the sequel. <laughs> But, the sequel but, has one of the best Nicolas Cage freakouts in it, though. <laughs> really does. If you're a fan of Nicolas Cage acting like a fucking weirdo and being Which like, is, ah, ah, well, if let's, totally does that. Let's in, be honest. If you're one. a fan of Nicolas Cage, you're a fan of Nicolas Cage acting like a fucking weirdo. I love that's Nicolas all Cage. He does. <laughs> but I I'm just saying, it. though, uh, and back to uh, honestly, his him, you know, getting in shape. He was old, at the same age or maybe a little bit older than Josh Brolin when he got into Ghost Rider mode and like literally like got all ripped out. So, 
It's not impossible, dude. I mean, he's. I. I, I can a, see a, it. I can see it. I, yeah. I, there's a difference between getting cut mm-hmm. and getting like fucking like putting on muscle mass. Yeah, but you like, can you can do that, man, with the right trainer. Like you know, like uh, Chris Hemsworth. I don't know if you remember. I don't. I don't you said you hate Star Trek. So I don't know if you saw the first. I don't Star hate Trek Star movie. Trek. It's not my favorite. Thing to watch. I don't know if you saw the first Star Trek movie that uh, Abrams did. Yeah, he was super skinny as shit in that. Yeah, yeah, like Chris Hemsworth. When you first see, when I first saw him, he was super skinny. When they announced that he was going to be Thor, I was like, no fucking way is this guy going to be Thor. And then when they finally, sh- they never showed anything until they showed that first preview, and they show him like standing there, like with his with shirt, shirt off. Yeah, and Natalie Portman's like, hmm, and like you, I'm just like, is that the same fucking dude? Like, oh, I mean, yeah. it's like it. it it amazes me like how quickly these these guys like just put on fucking dense muscle mass. It's yeah, but not dude, just but before you, but dude, before you even hear about them actually getting like in getting this role, they've already been working out for like four months. Yeah, you know, and then it's like another six months, seven months, but you know that maybe maybe another three months, and then and then they start filming, and he's continuing to work out as they film, you know. So it's like, it's a it's it's stuff that that excuse me that we've heard about. Before, I mean, the only guy I know, I don't know, I know of that that put on muscle extremely quick, faster than probably anybody I've heard of, was Christian Bale in the first Batman. He went from Christian Bale in The Machinist to like skeleton that you could see to fucking Bruce Wayne in Batman Begins. Mm. And I was reading a bunch of interviews. He was taking like fucking like um, like O2, like the shit that you, you know, that actually increases, increases blood flow to your thing. He was taking like all these different supplements. He was taking ridiculous amount of like weight gainer, uh, high intensity proteins. His diet was ridiculous. He's like, he's like, dude, he's like, I put on, he was like 20 pounds of muscle. He's like in six months, he goes, I would never recommend anybody does that that fast. He goes, he goes, I went through terrible mood swings. He goes, I, he goes, I was all over the place with like that mentally explains the voice. Yeah, you know what I'm just saying? Yeah. yeah like, oh, where is he? So, but I'm just saying like, you know, but I'm just saying like, it's just, it's, it's, it's all about like, that's super fast. That's, that's stress on yeah, your body. It amazes me. It just amazes me that they're able to do that. And I mean, it all comes down to like what we always say when we talk to each other, like it's their fucking job and that's all they have to do. Yeah. I mean, in shape. Like if all I had to do was get in shape, I didn't have to like go to work. I didn't have to like that was me going to work was going to the gym. Like, well, I was I was reading so I was watching a YouTube video the other day about Chris Pratt for Guardians of the Galaxy. They said that when he he went from like three hundred pounds to whatever, he's another one. Yeah, he literally said that he worked out four hours a day a day. Dude, I spend two hours at the gym and I feel like I've been there too long. He's there for four hours, right? Then he uh, four hours a day, uh, like six days a week, and then he would actually now he says that. Because he lost all the weight and he got in good shape, he actually likes like taking care of himself and, and exercising. But now he only spends an hour in the gym just to maintain. So getting there is hard. Once you're there, it's a, still a challenge to maintain it. But I mean, but which is easier. why like, yeah, it's it's easier, obviously. Like it's, if you eat right, like you gotta yeah. also eat right. Yeah, as I well mean, you can't go, go fucking day. like eat fucking you know Taco Bell every day. Like you gotta fucking still eat right throughout up until your neck because like you're, you're a dj it's the same thing is like when you have like two records playing at the same time and you're crossfading in between them it's the same thing like you're balancing mm-hmm. what you're doing like i mean you have you, you either have like a shit ton of this song mm-hmm. a little bit of that song or you have a shit ton of that song and a little bit of this song and like either way mm-hmm. like that's and in the you're middle you're just you're just like jacked. yeah you maintain yeah <laughs> In the yeah. middle, you just maintain. In the, in the middle, you're just in good shape. Yeah, <laughs> that was a really good comparison. I, like I um just to just to give you a heads up, I did some digging, and it looks like I found out some stuff on Hope Summers. If you're Sweet. curious about yeah, it, yeah, throw it out there. Uh, so Hope Summers is the daughter of a woman named Lois Spaulding. Not a whole lot is known about her. Um, she was a firefighter in Alaska, and her father is unknown. Okay, it's kind of. It's kind of made you. It's it's made to to look like oh, she might have been immaculately dude. conceived. Fuck yes, I like remember she's, now. Like she's the Christ of yeah. The it mutants. was it was it was a it was a story arc called the Messiah Complex. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Yep. And uh, and for those who don't know, I feel like an idiot because I forgot. Uh, Cyclops yeah, is actually the father of Cable. Yes. Okay. There you go. Yep. Um. So so just to break that down, that Messiah Complex thing, real quick. Uh. 
like basically there was a there were a period of time where no mutants were being born. Yes. Um, at all. And so like the only mutants on the planet were the ones that were actually in existence. And as they uh, as time goes on and they were dying off, like mutants would be extinct. And this was the first mutant to be born uh, in that time period after I, I don't know how many years. Uh, but it, it the reason why her name was Hope was because she was she was she was Hope for Hope. mutant kind. Yeah, you don't and, you don't um, name a kid Hope, especially in the comics. Yeah, unless there was a reason. And and Bishop, uh, the uh, time traveling uh, energy absorbing mutant, um, was back and we came back in time, and his mission was to literally find and kill Hope Summers um, because he wanted the mutant race to die out because of some reason or whatever. Uh, and I think it was because it was like to save his future. Uh, and Cable was, you know, hopping through time, trying to stop Bishop uh, from doing that. And finally was able to grab Hope Summers and travel to his future where he raised her um, and then brought her back to the present where she now exists in the X-Men uh, continuity. So that's, that's kind of her story. And, and I thank you for finding that. Because yeah, it you're triggered welcome. My memory and I'm like, glad no. that it triggered all yeah. that. <laughs> um, so, so that's her story. And uh, hopefully that's where we're going with uh, Deadpool 2. All right, everybody. So we are going to end this episode of the Red Bear podcast with a game of Would You Rather, as we so commonly do. Um, or often do. I don't know how the hell you would even say that. I don't give a shit. Either way. Yeah, fucking yeah, people, people know what we're talking it. about. All right, so um, let's do this. Who would like to go first? I'm going to give Cooley the opportunity to go first without even asking him because I like to put the pressure on. You mean to, like, answer or Yeah, you're going to answer. All right. Yeah, cool. So um, here we go, Cooley. First question for you is going to be, um, all right, which is better, day or nighttime? Day or nighttime, that's it. You fucking serious, man? Like nighttime, bro. All right, man. People, yeah. dude, some people are day people. I mean, nighttime is the right time. Day Night people nights. are freaking assholes. They're like <laughs> day people are the people that follow the rules. Yeah, you know, they're friends with cops. <laughs> <laughs> nighttime, nighttime people. Like they're not. I'm not saying that they're like you know criminals. <laughs> <laughs> but like they're, they're you know they've got a, they've got a cool streak to them you know you don't really know what like their backstory. It's, All right, <sighs> I will I I will say that there's, I'm sorry I took that over. No, that's fine. You're right. You're always, absolutely right. You, ever, you know who kind of get under my skin a little bit the night the daytime people who get up at like eight a.m. They're like. Just worked out like like ready to conquer the day. like all right like I like I do that sometimes but it's like I'm not psyched to get up. Some people are like yeah let's do this and then people, they have they have so much they're so high on like the workout high that it's it's just like all right buddy take it down. We know that you haven't had any sugar today. So um yeah that's the first question. We're gonna do three each. Next one. Would you rather lose internet access for life? Or have to walk everywhere for a year. <laughs> Dude, every day to work. <laughs> like, or just not be able to go on Google. That's a tough question for you, bro. But no Google forever. I'm a Bing guy myself. It's tough because like, here's, here's my problem, right? Is that I think the internet has kind of ruined everybody. Mm-hmm. But if everybody's going to have the internet and I can't, that's going to suck ass. Yeah. Um, but if you have to leave like three hours in advance to get to work, you can't do shit. This is true. <laughs> but I would only have to put up with that for a year. You'd be lean, though. True. So You would be a lean so coolie. I would do that. You'd walk everywhere for a year? Well, okay. yeah. Yeah, if I would. Because I, I wouldn't want to be the only person without internet access. That would suck ass. And that would be like forever. That would be for my whole nah, life. For life. Oh, true. All right. Words. Yeah. One th that's a good way to look at it. I got you. Word. All right. And last question. Um, okay. Become 100 million and have no arms or become 10 million and have only one eye. What is what? What, what does that it's mean? Like, <laughs> it's that's the age. Become 100 million years old and have no arms or become 10 million years old and have only one eye. Hmm. 
I don't think it fucking matters because like if I'm that age, I I think all of them are gonna be all of those body parts are not going to work. So, whatever. Uh, I, I don't know. I I'll I, go with one eye just because I'll look better than having no arms. Yeah, and at least you can still be somewhat productive with arms. I don't think I'm productive at all at 10 million years old. <laughs> I'm hardly productive at 44, so being productive is just it's just it's just it's just waking up. Plus, I mean, I don't know for a fact, but I feel like if I was 10 million years old, yeah. if I saw the dinosaurs come and go like five times, <laughs> I'd be fucking bored with Earth by now. Like, I wouldn't want to live 10 times what I've already dealt with. Yeah. Like, I feel like the Earth is gone. The sun exploded. Like I'm just a fu- like I'm just a <laughs> fucking guy with no arms, just floating in space. It's a fucking jellyfish. It's yeah, basically yeah. what you oh, are. Oh, just just freaking in darkness. Everybody, that, everybody that you know or love is gone. Everyone, everyone. Yeah. Like it's you're to the point now where you're not even making friends anymore. Yeah, you don't even have emotions because anymore. It, oh yeah, yeah. You're like you're like Mr. Manhattan. Yep. You know you're exactly. Just, <laughs> you just you can't connect with other people <laughs> all right word cool uh jim here we go bud hello uh would you rather obsess over donuts or obsess over bagels um i uh, donuts are way more delicious than bagels no disrespect to bagels but uh bagels is kind of like it's like a morning thing. Yeah, yeah. And donuts are fucking all day, all night. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like donuts are the party bagel. Oh, the party bagel. All right. I've never heard of that shit. You so, only gave me two questions, by the way. But that's I did? All right. Yeah. I'll go back. All right. Um, 70 cent of people agree with you. Nah. Yeah, I agree with you. Yep. All right. Yeah, I'd go donuts. Twenty three percent of those fucking morning people that are just like, Ugh. especially now with all the fucking craft donuts that they have. Oh, have you had a bacon donut yet? Oh yeah. Oh, fucking mind blown. All right, let's let's take it back. Let's focus. Here we go. Would you rather eat moldy cheese or drink Coke with a snail in it? <laughs> to be honest with you, I'd do both. Like without. <laughs> Without hesitation, like the like moldy cheese, that's blue cheese. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, right. uh, which is delicious with some <laughs> buffalo chicken. Yeah, Coke um, with a snail in it. Coke with a snail. I've drank tequila with a worm. Plus, Coke Coke would literally fucking kill the taste of the snail because it's just fucking oh yeah, oh, but it it's would kill like, the, it would yeah, kill but it's got snail. like snail juice in it though. Yeah, well, I mean, like, how big is this snail? I don't know. In relation to the amount of Coke that I'm drinking. Still, I don't, ugh, I don't give a shit. All right, well, know? dude, uh, 50, ugh, 50% of people agree with you. Oh, it's like half and half. Yeah. All right. And your last question. Um, would you rather... <laughs> this is perfect for you. Would you rather go to a haunted house... Or a haunted graveyard. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> perfect. Oh, yuck. Um, <laughs> you know what? I would go to a haunted graveyard. Because you already live across the street from two cemeteries. I, I do live across the street from two cemeteries. <laughs> and I used to get wasted. And then I would drive home from the club. <laughs> and I would just I would just walk around I would walk around the graveyard and be like I'm here like <laughs> Like it's no joke I I am not <laughs> But I'm but but everyone but every one of my friends knows that I'm not good at horror movies I'm not good at jump scares particularly and I feel like that would happen more often in a haunted house because you have doorways and you have rooms and you can't see what's what's in the next room. Whereas you're in a graveyard, it's open air. I'm going to see some scary shit, yes, but nothing's going to all of a sudden be like, bah! Like, um, yeah. A hand might come out of the ground and pull me down, but it's not as scary <laughs> as something being like, bah! <laughs> <laughs> See, I think a hand coming out of the ground versus someone going, it's a little fucking scarier. It's I'm sorry. Not to me. All right. Well, cool. And, uh, dude, um, 
Sixty percent of people disagree with you. They would rather go to a haunted house. Rather a haunted house. Probably because they're thinking of like a haunted house that's like, oh, like 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 the you can't touch. They can't touch you. Where oh yeah, where a a haunted, not a legit haunted house. Yeah, and I was going legit. Yeah, and I I I I can I can agree with you. I think on that a graveyard would be scary as shit, but a haunted house like I I don't know I don't know I'd have to think about that, but I think I'm leaning with graveyard for now. Yeah, um, when I hear this question, I just hear, would you rather go to a house or a graveyard? Yeah. So you go to the house. You can go to the fucking house. All right. <laughs> cool. All right, cool. Um, and coolly, I know we, I, we skipped a question. So um, would you rather tear your nails off one by one or get hit by a car? <laughs> I'd rather get hit by a car. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's all at once. How fast is the car going though? Yeah, I don't fucking care. Either I die or I survive, but what but I it's all at once. And I don't have to like fucking like pull my nails off one by one. Yeah. Which yeah. is fucking awful. Yeah, it sounds awful. Yeah. All right. So uh I guess it's my turn. Let's There's go. There's a difference between pain and torture. Yes, yes. Good, you know? good. Very good. Yeah. Pain and torture, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um so so for you. <laughs> Dude, I already know. You like search for some fucking. Yeah, I know, I know. It always does. This isn't fucked up yet. All right. Uh, would you rather be able to fight, but everyone thinks you can't fight or what? can't fight, but everyone thinks you can fight? I'm going to go with the first one and say, I, I can fight, but everybody thinks I can't because I'm still going to fucking win. Yeah. And dude, if you've ever studied drunken master, which I did, people think you're drunk, but you screw people up. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to go with the first one. Yeah. Yeah. People can think whatever they want, but I still won. Everybody like eighty five percent of people agree with that. Yeah, and I don't get my ass kicked. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because if you if everyone thinks you can fight, there's gonna be a lot of people out there that are gonna want to fight you. Yeah, because they're gonna be like, hmm, that's that's gonna be like a notch in my just, belt. Yeah, so sh- what? Is, so yeah, so what you're gonna the, get knocked out. But and what does the be like, second portion not. mean? Like, so basically, I lose, but I look good doing it. <laughs> like, what? That doesn't even make any. All right, whatever. It's like people are afraid of you until they punch you. All right, cool. That's so. I'm going with the first one. Would you rather one color or rainbow all colors? That that's the question. Would I rather one color or rainbow all colors? Um. Well, I mean, right now I'm one color because I I have red hair. Um. I guess that's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> I don't know. That's where you're going with this? No, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just joking. I, I have no Dude, idea. Dude, 76% of people would rather rainbow all colors. I was going to say that. Oh, okay. No, I, I I said right now I'm, but I mean, I was, that was a dumb fuck. I would rather, <laughs> okay, I would rather rainbow colors because you need some variety. You know what I mean? Hmm. At least I'm just not one color all day. You know, I can Yeah. rainbow colors. <laughs> all of them. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> because rainbows are all colors. Yeah, yeah. There's not like just usually five. In yeah. A rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. All right. So hold up here. Yep. This is good water. It's refreshing. Yep. <clears throat> is it from a brook or? Yeah. It's, I, I taxed that cups out of the toilet. Oh. <laughs> from the tank or from the. <laughs> <laughs> the bolt. Oh. Mm. Yo, how you doing over there, Rain Man? You got a question yet? He's Jesus all stuck. Christ. Well, just pick one, bro. Would you rather the internet go away or every museum with all artifacts goes away? As heartbreaking as it would be, I would say have the museums with the artifacts go away. Because I feel like you would still be able to see them on the internet. So you could still see them, like pictures of them on the internet and still understand them. Because I could go right now to like the Smithsonian and like look at all the artifacts, right? And read about them. But if I haven't seen them, I mean, seeing them in person is going to be cool as shit. But, you know, the I feel like the internet as as, you know modern day it sounds i mean i feel like the internet has a big impact on how the world is run so i feel like you can't just take away the internet without the world crashing you know what i mean so i i feel like 
you know, yeah, I'd probably say uh, keep the internet. Um, ninety percent of people agree with you. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go with the unpopular answer. Mm-hmm. I, I think the internet should go away. Um, and I and by that I mean the internet as we know it, just like like all of it. Yeah, like I mean, like you should still have like communication mm-hmm. via internet, uh, being able to like, you know, send like you know things from like like intercompany shit. Mm-hmm. But I mean, as far as like shit like Google and like Wikipedia and all the shit that, because I mean, it's just too much fucking knowledge out there that, and I mean, people are ruining their lives over this shit. Um, it, like there, there are people that think that they can do things that they can't do and they're fucking up their shit. They're fucking up like the shit that they own. They're fucking up. Like a lot of people are fucking up their own lives with this shit. Um, and there's just too much information about movies and shit like that too. Um, like, I mean, like I know too much about shit that's coming out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, which that's, is weird. there's no it's real weird. surprise it's weird to hear that. Yeah, it's weird to hear that from somebody who is on a podcast about upcoming movies and events. Spoilers. <laughs> but the the reality is, is that like I'm not. Yeah, I'm, it's like you said. There are no more surprises. There are no more. Uh, there's no more like, oh shit, that's coming out. Oh, when does it come out? Next week? Like, oh yeah. Like I remember, I remember back in the day, like just seeing a preview for a movie, and then like maybe a month later, I'm going to see it. Where now we're getting shit like fucking way too far in advance and like all this anticipations building and all these leaks happen uh, because of the Internet, uh, like just everything just gets ruined. Um, I will. I'll say this. I, I agree with you um, on like for that aspect. Yes, I agree with you. Um, and the other thing I just want to point out is I noticed before the Internet, like as like I've, I dude, I was growing up. I was in college when friggin' MySpace was the thing, mm. you know. And then like everybody had like a MySpace page, and then Facebook came out, and I was like, Ooh, Facebook's stupid. When, when we got into college, AIM became popular. Yeah, exactly, dude. Right. So I mean, like, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like me and Don, like we were talking about how we used to chat on AIM. Like that's how him and I like I hung hated out. AIM. But oh, I mean, like, I thought I, it was such a fad, and I was wicked see, wrong. See, I loved it because it was a, it was like I thought it was cool to be able to chat with somebody online. You know, you could I don't know. But regardless, I feel like now because of social media, there's so much more negativity out there that you're that, that hits you in the face daily mm-hmm. that it actually just becomes like it becomes stressful, you know, where I I don't know if I that's the one thing I would want to take away with it. Like, I don't know. I don't know why people have to post on Facebook. Like, oh, I'm having the shittiest day ever. Like or the, or they they post their negative political reviews and it's just, it's just, it becomes overwhelming sometimes people that, and that's the one thing I wish was taken out of it. How about people that share confidential like photos with other people and those other people just for fucking out of spite, revenge or whatever, decide that they're going to post like nudes of like, you know, their friends or whatever on whatever site and share that shit. Like, that's what I mean by ruining yeah. lives. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, um, yeah, that's like, sucks. I mean, yeah. you have people that are literally like tearing each other down. I mean, our fucking president wouldn't have the, the negative presence that he has you right have now. Twitter, yeah. Uh, through Twitter and all this other shit. I mean, sure, he, I mean, honestly, I, he probably wouldn't be president now if it wasn't for the internet. Possibly. Like, it, I think that's, that's a, I think that's a, a thing. Is that, or maybe he would be because people wouldn't have like any knowledge of like, you know, who he is as a person, mm. but nobody would be thinking negatively of him right now because we wouldn't have all the shit that leaked out. You know what I mean? Like, I no, think, I, I agree. I yeah. think a, I think a lot less people would hate Trump or they would be ambivalent about Trump if he just didn't have Twitter. Yeah. And that's and I don't have and I'm not rooting for Trump or I'm not, you know, I don't I, either way. I don't care. I'm just right. saying in general. Who the fuck was that? That was mine. Sorry, that was my phone went off. No, but all but all I'm saying is, if he just got off Twitter, people wouldn't realize how fucking stupid he is sometimes. Hmm. True. So, good question, Cooley. <laughs> yeah, that was a, yeah, really that was good, a good one. one. That. That's a really good one. It's one of the better ones we've had. Remember, remember magazines? Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Like, I remember, like, getting a magazine subscription and being like, yeah, I can't wait for the next issue so mm-hmm. I can fucking see what, what they have to say about X, Y, and I don't have Cracked that Cracked Magazine you don't have Electronic that. Gaming Monthly. You don't have Mad that anymore. Mad Magazine. 
Mad Magazine was another one that I yeah. used to get. Yep, Mad this too. Well, Mad was the was the more well just, known one. Yeah, it's 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 almost crippling because yeah. it, mm-hmm. I, I, you know I mean it's like a heavy weight. So anyway, like yeah, good question. Is Nintendo no. Power still a thing? Is what Nintendo Power? No. Oh. No, dude. <laughs> That's been a thing for a long time. When I was Wizard when I was magazine young, magazine is gone. I used to I used to send them letters and I would draw on the envelopes because I wanted my envelope to get into Nintendo Power magazine. Ah, oh, dude, the Magic Eye is no longer a thing. <laughs> Remember the magic eye? It was on no the one back does of- magic eye anymore. <laughs> no, no one does that shit. Oh man. Anyway, that's gonna do it for this episode of the Red Beard Podcast. Uh, I want to thank you guys for listening once again. Uh, we're gonna keep you posted. Boston Comic Con is this weekend. Uh, not something I'm going out of my way to attend, but I may go. I'm not sure yet. Um, other than that, to come, we have New York Comic Con in October, and in November we have Rhode Island Comic Con. Uh, where Red Bear Podcast will be there. So, yeah, check it out. Keep keep uh, keep listening, guys. We'll see you next week. See ya. I'm already gone. Later. <laughs>